to Lessons in RxJS Mastering the Operators. My name is Jordan Powell, and I am a Senior Enterprise Software Engineer at Breedbug. Today, we're going to talk about the RxJS Operator Filter. This operator pretty much speaks for itself. When applied to an observable stream, it only emit values when it satisfies the provided predicate, similar to Array.Filter in JavaScript. Filter is a simple yet powerful addition to any tool belt and will help your applications be reactive, functional, and declarative. The more you work with RxJS observable streams, the more you will see the power of using Filter. Let's use it to create a form control that will save automatically, but only when that control is valid. To do this, we'll use the value changes observable on that control and the filter operator. By importing the filter operator from the RxJS library, as well as the validators that we'll use for this example, we'll then pipe into its value changes observable stream, which will emit a new value with every change in value to the email control. We now want to insert the filter operator to allow values to emit only if the control is in a valid state. Finally, we subscribe to that stream and call save with the new filtered email. In this use case, filter plays a valuable role as it satisfies the business rule only to call save when the user enters a valid email. Now let's look at another real world example of filter in NGRX FX. Let's say we have an application that needs to support both light and dark themes. Create a new action called update theme that takes in a prop of type theme, which is just a string of either dark or light. Then create an action called user preference change to dark and user preference change to light, which won't need to take in any props. Now create two different effects that listen to that action called update theme, which will then dispatch the corresponding action used to uniquely identify the user's theme preference. Currently, both effects are dispatching actions regardless of the theme. But if we apply filter to these effects, we can easily identify which unique action to dispatch based upon the theme prop. This case may seem trivial, but filter is a powerful tool when working in NGRX. It allows us to create small and simple effects that have one single responsibility. This leads to cleaner code that is easier to read, easy to maintain over time, and simple to test. Because the filter operator is just a function that evaluates the provided condition, we can also take advantage of functional composition. In some cases, the condition provided in the filter operator can just be inlined. However, it is a best practice to separate all non-trivial evaluations into their own functions. This way, Filter can test the condition independent of the stream to assure its accuracy. Though the filter operator works in a similar fashion as the JavaScript filter method, a common trap that many, including myself, run into when using it is assuming it works the exact same way JavaScript's filter method does. The filter operator filters observable events, not the items in the events themselves. This is a common mistake when making HTTP requests that return collections. If you try to pipe into that HTTP response and then use the filter operator to filter the items in a collection, it simply will not work. An important thing to remember is that the filter operator always returns a Boolean, meaning it skips values when false and emits new values when true. One of the most common pitfalls I've run into when reviewing code with observable streams is when filter logic is put into the subscribe block or inside a blocked map. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Now get out there and start utilizing it with your observable streams. I can't wait to see you in the next video.